These are my top 13 things to do in the amazing place that is Kyoto, Japan. Kyoto is the city in Japan where nature meets culture, where man-made beauty effortlessly blends in with natural beauty, where the spiritual and natural world almost feels indistinguishable, like you're living in a real-life Makoto Shinkai film. So hold your horses, because we have a lot of ground to cover. Number one, get lost. No, I don't mean like click off the video, I mean get lost in Kyoto, although I did try and trick you. Did it work? Probably, probably not. Kyoto is a city that is ridiculously dense with little gems for you to discover. There are over 1,600 Buddhist temples and 400 Shinto shrines, so that leaves so many things to just be stumbled upon and discover without even meaning to. It's a perfect city to explore aimlessly, whether you're in a popular area with lots of tourists or an area that's just, I don't know, near your accommodation or a random bus stop or a couple streets over from an area you're wanting to explore anyway. This is the best way to have some unforgettable memories where you could honestly have like a whole temple or garden or area to yourself where you can really feel something special while being in Japan. Cause that's the whole point of going, right? Undoubtedly, this is the number one way to experience Kyoto, Japan. Now, number two is an actual thing to do. This is to plan on visiting Fushimi Inari Taisha. This is an extremely popular place, but in my opinion, it is the number one place that you must include when planning specific things for our itinerary. Surely you've seen pictures or videos of these iconic red Tori gates somewhere in your life, but there is so much more to Fushimi Inari Taisha than just these. For starters, you can actually hike up to the top of Mount Inari, where you get a pretty decent view. probably get some other better ones, which believe it or not, I'll talk about later on this list. But it's the journey itself that is truly magical. It's a little bit busy, pretty busy, really busy, honestly, if you're going during the middle of the day in the nearby areas to the main sort of Shinto shrine area. But once you get to the Red Tori Gate and you get past the crowds, you can have entire areas all to yourself, whether it's like a really quaint, beautiful Shinto shrine, some different statues and areas in the forests. There's even a bamboo forest where if you meander a little bit off the way, check out my Fushimi Inari Taisha guide to see more, you can find this beautiful bamboo grove. So this is a must do. You will have some places almost all to yourself if you do the hike and get off the beaten path a little bit. And this will make you honestly feel like you're entering a different world throughout your journey. So definitely have to do Fushimi Inari Taisha. Number three is to explore the neighborhood Higashiyama. Now this is one of my favorite two neighborhoods in Kyoto, favorite for the reason of giving that traditional, authentically cultural Japan feel that people visit Kyoto in the first place for. Some must-see areas in this neighborhood are going to be Sanenzaka and Ninenzaka, which are two iconic streets, and the Hokanji Pagoda, which is right nearby. It all is in a tight little area, which is really convenient. Another plus is that there are many vendors along this area where you can sample and buy traditional Japanese street foods, which makes for such a fun experience while exploring. I recommend starting your date early here in this neighborhood at Starbucks. It's not just your typical Starbucks, it is a Ninenzaka, and it's built in a machio, which is like a traditional Japanese building or house, something you would expect a samurai to live in with tatami mats where you can actually drink a caffeinated beverage early to start your day. There are also two Ghibli stores here, which are great for people that are into Ghibli movies, obviously, and some anime manga shops where you can get some good merchandise or do some window shopping, which makes you really feel like you're in Japan as well. There are also many temples in this area, one of which we will talk about very soon. So soon that it is actually number four being Kiyomizudera Temple. This is a massive Buddhist temple that is very popular, but it's very worth it. Here there are two pagodas, an iconic giant wooden stage overlooking the hill, great views of Kyoto, and even a magic waterfall. As I said, it is in the neighborhood of Higashiyama, right up the street from Sanenzaka. So perfect to include these two together in one day. Be sure to check out my guide on this place that goes into even more detail and talks about some of the fascinating historical facts and sort of Japanese superstitions that exist today. Now number five is to explore the neighborhood of Gion, but at night. Located just to the north, sort of northwest of Higashiyama, Gion is my other favorite of those two neighborhoods that totally exemplifies that traditional, authentic Japanese feeling in Kyoto. You might have heard of this neighborhood because it has a chance of you encountering a geisha working around at night. Some must-see areas here are going to be the Shirakawa Lane area, 
the Tatsumibashi bridge area, just kind of looking in the same space. The Yasaka Shrine. And honestly, this entire area of the map here that I'm showing is just a gold mine with beautiful sights and buildings at night. It's gorgeous during the day as well, so I definitely recommend checking them out during both. But at night, it just has that otherworldly feel that I crave, with the lanterns being lit, the lights outside the buildings, you see the beautiful wood illuminating in the night. It honestly feels like you're walking around a town and spirited away. It's so magical. Number six is the Arashiyama Monkey Park Iwateyama. Although Kyoto is most famous for temples, shrines, and cultural experiences, this is undoubtedly one of my favorite things to do in Kyoto. In the northwest neighborhood of Arashiyama, you can walk only about 20 to 30 minutes uphill to reach this park that is actually inhabited by 120 Japanese macaque monkeys, freely roaming monkeys. The views from the top are fantastic, even better than Fushimi Inari. I told you I'd tell you a place with better views. But more than the views, it is even cooler to see sights of these macaques playing and interacting with each other freely in their natural habitat, essentially. With no barrier between you and them, there's no zoo, they're able to fully express themselves and act how they want to. You can even feed the monkeys while they are free and you're the one that's inside a cage and they can choose to be fed or not and still be free to have their space or run away if they want to, which is such a cool concept. I love it. It's the ethical way to experience wildlife, not like a zoo. So definitely have to check this place out. And as always, check out my guide if you want to see more. Number seven is the Sagano Bamboo Forest. Aha, it did appear on this list. Which is also located in the neighborhood of Arashiyama where the monkey park is. This is undoubtedly the most gorgeous and iconic bamboo forest in Kyoto, if not all of Japan. Definitely the most iconic in Japan. If there's a more beautiful one, let me know because I'm booking my tickets right now. You won't believe how tall and dense this bamboo forest is until you're walking literally amongst them, being encircled by these beautiful plants around you. However, be warned, this place is extremely busy and touristy, especially if you're going in the afternoon on a weekend. Your best bet is to go as early in the morning as possible during the week. That's not always possible, of course, but earlier the better, and if not, just be prepared to expect a lot of people there. Maybe they'll ruin the experience, maybe not, but to feel the most zen and at peace and present with nature, less people the better, of course. Now, number eight is to explore the actual neighborhood, Arashiyama. So this is another neighborhood, of course in Kyoto, that within itself is just a fun area to walk around and explore and experience. Some must-dos and must-sees, in my opinion, are the Togetsukyo Bridge, which you do need to cross to go to the monkey park, eating street food up and down the main street. Hi everybody, here I have Ichigo Daifuku, which is like a strawberry mochi. Looks absolutely delicious. Mmm, that's so good. Visiting Tenruji Temple and Garden, and the ultimate hidden gem, Kakura Koseyen, which is a family-run matcha shop where they actually mail matcha in-house. The lady there will make you some fresh matcha tea. It is so delicious, she is very kind and very helpful. Of course, I supported her business and bought some stuff to take home with me after the fact, but this is honestly one of the most precious experiences I've ever had in Japan. I hold it so close to my heart. So thank you, lady that owns Kakura Koseyen. However, there's one more gym in Arashiyama which you must visit, which is number nine, Arashiyama Randen Station? I know, I know, I know. This one surprised me too, but hear me out. It is located in the middle of Arashiyama and it's actually a tram station. So if you are coming to Arashiyama from Kyoto via the tram, you'll necessarily visit Arashiyama Randen Station. But there is so much here to unpack. First of all, there are live performances, literally just outside the station, of people playing some traditional Japanese instruments such as the koto and the shamisen, which was so cool, and they're dressed in traditional clothing as well. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Very cool, unique experience. And actually through the station, towards the right, there's a kimono forest, which is actually a man-made creation, which is pretty much like an art piece with a little forest or just kind of lines of these different pillars designed like traditional Japanese kimonos. And during night, they even light up, which makes it feel super beautiful and 
otherworldly as always. But however, the ultimate hidden gem of the station is the Randen Foot Onsen. This is the Foot Onsen, which is across from the Kimono Forest, right by the actual tram tracks. And it looks a little unassuming at first, but it's a small little place where you can go in and soak your feet, which you oh, will be so grateful for if you walk around as much as most people do in Japan. It's only 200 yen to use, which is like less than $2. It's so cheap. And of course you wash your feet before you get in, so it's not gonna be as gross and grody, but it's such a cool little place. We were the only tourists there, so if there's a bunch of tourists there, I'm sorry, Japanese people, but you gotta share your beautiful place with everyone else. Now, number 10 is an experience, which is to stay in a ryokan. Now, there is no place in Japan where it feels more appropriate to embrace traditional Japanese culture. So if at all possible, I think you really should try and stay in a ryokan in Japan, which is just essentially a traditional Japanese hotel. They can be quite expensive at night. We're talking like $200 plus, but oftentimes, almost always, they include meals, so you don't have to worry about eating out, and a lot of them even include an onsen, which is another really cool thing you have to do in Japan, and if you can include it in your accommodation, that's a bonus, especially after a long day of exploring. Now, if you're a budget traveler like moi, I recommend looking into the Gion Ryokan Kyube. Now, first of all, this Ryokan is in an amazing location because it's like tucked between Gion and Higashiyama, which are extremely dense with sights to see and really cool areas to explore within themselves. Also, it's a really good price, being about $43 a night for a private room, which if you're seeing with another person, we're talking like a really good price. It's more of like a hostel style. You don't have your own bath. There's a bathroom which you share with individual stalls and units, but I felt really good. I didn't feel like I was, uh, you know, didn't have my privacy or anything. It's really quiet, it's chill. So I definitely would recommend this place if you want to do a ryokan on a budget. It also includes everything you'd want, like sleeping on a tatami floor and being able to wear a robe around, making you feel like you are living life like a Japanese person, which you're really not, but it makes you feel like you are, you know? Number 11 is something food related, which we haven't really talked about that much, which is to visit the Nishiki Market. I know, I know, how could I make a video on Japan and barely include food? Nishiki Market is actually referred to as the Kitchen of Kyoto and is a market that has been around for more than 400 years. There's also a roof overhead, which makes it a perfect rainy day activity. Personally, I felt like it was a little bit overrated, but I'm also vegan, so my uh, options are limited anyway. I'm also able to eat a few things, and it's still cool to walk in and take in the atmosphere of a market in Japan. It's also a good place to change things up and mix things up if you're a little bit burnt out from just doing cultural temples and shrines, that sort of thing. I also would prefer just to eat some street food around those other areas we talked about earlier, such as Arashiyama and Higashiyama. Number 12 is Pontocho Alley. If you're craving more of those areas with those narrow alleys, lanterns hanging outside those beautiful traditional wooden buildings with small businesses, which you never know what you even could be seeing, then this is an area that I really recommend you add to your list. This narrow alley is beautiful during the day, but similar to Gion, it really comes alive and takes on itself during the nighttime. It's packed full of restaurants and bars and is mostly famous for the locals, but a lot of the bars and restaurants can be a little bit pricey and a little bit intimidating to visit because they don't particularly go out of their way to cater towards English speakers. Japanese people are nice and friendly and they will, but it's not advertised as such. Now, personally, for my own recommendations, are this place called Underbar for a really cool sort of neon lit chill place where I actually had some good conversation with some tourists and locals alike. Barcode for karaoke, not typical Japanese karaoke, but in a public area like Westerners are used to. So if you wanna make a fool out of yourself in front of locals, this is the place to do it. And the Bar Liquor Museum, which in my opinion is the best place to walk in and have a good conversation and have some good drinks with good people around you. Last on this list, number 13, is Kinkakuji Temple. Alas, how could I, did I really just say alas? <laughs> how could I not include this iconic, beautiful, brilliant, gold, shiny temple that everyone probably wants to visit when they go to Japan? So although it is a magnificent sight to behold, I do actually have mixed feelings about it. Number one is it is so far away from everywhere else. Well, maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but it really is kind of inconvenient to get to. You can take a bus, which will take you almost directly there, but it is an hour from the center of Kyoto, and it's not like you can easily combine it with a bunch of other things or itinerary. You kind of have to make a separate trip out of going just here. Number two is it is always busy. I don't care if it's during the week. I don't care if it's just right when it opens. I don't care if it's COVID times and there's no foreign tourists allowed. It is always busy because it's popular for domestic tourism. You will never have the place all to yourself unless you like cut them a special deal where you come in when the temple's not open. King Kakuji is like that immensely popular pop song that you want to hate, but you just find yourself 
humming the tune and tapping your beat to it because it's just so damn catchy. But please keep in mind, it is not the temple you want to visit. If you want to have an emotional connection, to feel that spiritual Zen feeling that people crave in temples, it is more of just a beautiful, iconic site that I think everyone should have at least once in their life. Take in the view, really sear it into your brain, appreciate all the fine details of the temple from a visual standpoint, then just walk around through the garden and then make your way out of the other side because there are more temples to have a more personal feeling in Kyoto for sure. So there we have it. Those are my 13 things to do in Kyoto. Obviously, if you broke this apart, this could be a much bigger list of things to do. This is how I ultimately recommend for you to have the best possible experience in Kyoto. You do these things, I promise you. Money back guaranteed, although I never asked any money from you. Just subscriptions, please. That's all I need. Subscriptions are my payment. You will have the best time possible in Kyoto, Japan. So what do you think, everybody? Do any of these things look particularly interesting to you? Have you heard of any of these things before? Do you have any recommendations for me and myself personally? Please comment them down below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Top things to do in Osaka, Japan. Peace.